Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and this is the hardware and software tour of the Acer B-Touch E200. This is a Windows Mobile 6.5 slider device. It's relatively inexpensive too. It cost about $350 over at Clove, which is pretty cheap for a device uh, that is unlocked and that does 3G, although not in the US. If you're in Europe, you'll get 3G, HSDPA, HSUPA, but in the US, you will only get Edge. So let's take a look at the B-Touch E200. The screen is 3 inches diagonal, and the resolution is 400 down and 240 across, so that would be WQVGA. A lot of newer devices have much higher resolution screens than this, but of course this is a budget device, so that's what you get. Up here we have the speaker, down here is the Acer logo with a traditional D-pad, and in the center if you press the button inward, uh, it will select. You have call end and call start. What's missing down here, and what is really unfortunate, is that it doesn't have a button for OK or close, which is very important in Windows Mobile, or a start menu button. So a lot of the time, you have to reach up with your thumb to close a program or to hit the start menu, whereas a lot of other Windows Mobile devices, say like the Touch Pro, you know, have the start menu button and the OK button built right into the bottom of the phone. So that's a little bit of an annoyance. If we slide down the phone, or actually slide it up, we get the T9 style um, numeric pad. So if you are good at T9, then this will be familiar territory to you, but if you like a hardware keyboard, then you're gonna have to get used to this, or you can use the on-screen keyboard, which is better than the default Windows Mobile keyboard, but not too great. It's got a nice brushed metal coating, and as you saw before, it actually is, uh, it's actually backlit, so the numbers light up when the conditions get dark. It's not doing it right now. And this is actually a functional slider, which is pretty cool. So if somebody calls and you want to answer the call, slide it open to answer, slide it down to hang up. So it's always nice to see a functional slider there. Let's go around the side of the device. Here we have a standby button, and also you can take the phone out of standby by uh, opening the slider as you just saw. We also have a volume up and down rocker. Then we have mini USB for syncing, charging, and for audio. This does not have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, unfortunately. It's not really made to be a multimedia device with, you know, a small screen like this. On the bottom, we have the microphone. Over here, we have the dual action camera button. So it has autofocus, but no flash, although it does have 3.2 megapixels. Here's the stylus. This is a resistive touch screen. Um, so you have this kind of cheap collapsible stylus that you can take out from the side. The sides are adorned in this silver and the front is kind of black with the brushed metal. The back has that nice rubbery coating that makes it feel secure in hand. That said, in hand feel while it's secure is kind of low quality. Acer's build quality is notoriously low. And we can pop off the back battery cover by going over here. Back here we have the uh, we have the battery with the SIM card and the micro SD card slot, which is right here. Unfortunately, you have to take out the battery to access that. And then down here you can see the speaker, and up here is of course the camera. So let's put this back on, and we're going to talk about the software on this device. Okay, so here we are with the Acer B-Touch E200 turned on, and what you'll notice right off the bat is the home screen comes right from the Acer Neo Touch, uh, which is actually the Snapdragon running Windows mobile device that we actually reviewed very highly, because it was one of the fastest devices we've ever tested. Unfortunately, the B-Touch E200 is not nearly as fast. So this is really just a simple program launcher, so we can hit the little gear down here, and we can add new programs. We can flick through. I'm just using a stylus because uh, it's easier to use while filming, although it does have good finger-friendly operation. The screen is relatively sensitive, not nearly as sensitive as we found on, say, the HTC uh, Touch Pro 2, for example. So we can add, say, File Explorer and check off there. So very simple, no-frills home screen, which is good and bad. There's no eye candy, but then again, there's really no... Um, there's no really extended functionality here. You can hit, you can open the start menu by tapping down here, and it's nice that they added that because otherwise you'd have to reach up to the top all the time. And when you're in a program, you do have to reach up to the top all the time to open the start menu. So you're using it here with your thumb, D-pad, D-pad, you have to reach up and you get the idea from there. So tapping this, tapping this button on the left will unlock or will lock the device and it takes a moment to go into the lock screen. And here we are, standard Windows Mobile 6.5 lock screen. We can slide to the right. In the upper right corner, we have a quick link to the built-in task manager. So it's not an Acer skin task manager, but it's nice that they put it um, over there. 
This device has 256 megabytes of RAM, which is pretty good for a budget device. Let's go into the start menu and flick around and see what we have here. So we have uh, all the standard stuff, Internet Explorer Mobile. Um, you're probably going to want to install Opera Mobile 9.5 or Skyfire to get a better browsing experience. So let's take a look at social networking. And we saw this on the other Acer device. And you can see it tends to be a little bit slow. It has a 528 megahertz processor. Um, so from here, we can launch the built-in Facebook application, which is standard to Windows Mobile now. And a lot of these other things will take you right to uh, the website. So if we go to YouTube, it's going to open up um, a little YouTube application, actually, that Acer built. And we're going to click on uh, the region here. And we're not going to cover the YouTube application, but it basically is a mobile skinned version um, of the website. So it's a little bit more easily digestible in such a small screen. So I'm going to exit from here. And we're going to exit from here. And we'll go back in the start menu, see what else is in here. So we have standard stuff like agenda, which is the obviously the built in calendar which has been skinned a little bit. And again, we saw this in the other Acer device, the NeoTouch. It's a little nicer way to view your, your, uh, your different appointments. So we can tap on a certain day, and then we can click on today to get right to today. And we can go to the next month or the previous month. Um, and so you get the point here, sort of the agenda view. So a nicer way to view uh, your, your calendar than what is built into Windows Mobile Standard. So here we have Marketplace, an entry for multimedia, streaming media player, obviously, so you can watch mobile.youtube. And over here, Album, which is just a, a slightly more glorified photo album than what you get on the um, default Windows Mobile. You can slow, swipe to the right, swipe to the left. Obviously, no multi-touch, so you can't um, pinch to zoom or anything like that. And here's where the lack of OK button kind of becomes a problem because you can't press an OK button to quickly get out. You have to tap on the screen. You have to find the back button, and then you proceed from there. OK, uh, let's scroll down further, see what else we have here. Communications manager, really standard stuff. This one's also a little bit different, preferences. So here we can go into connections and see the sort of Acer um, skinned connection manager, which is a little bit nicer. We can go into phone to determine certain things about the phone. These are just taken from the standard Windows mobile settings, just made to look a little bit nicer for the Acer uh, B-Touch E200. Let's go down a little bit. And let's go into the on-screen keyboard so you can get a sense for how that looks and how it feels on a device like this. OK, so let's test the on-screen keyboard. I'm just going to tap here to bring it up. And it's kind of small because obviously this is a 3-inch screen. The on-screen keyboard itself on these Acer devices is quite good, um, but that really doesn't solve the problem of having such a small screen. And if we go into landscape, uh, nothing is going to happen. So let's try. Uh, this is a test. So that didn't work out too well. Let me try again. Uh, this time I'll type something else and try to be a little bit more precise. I'll say today is Monday. So slightly better results there, not too much better. Let's actually use the T9 pad sort of as it was intended. Um, I don't use T9 too much, but I did back in the day. And so let's see how it works. So I'm going to say today is uh, Monday. Today is, I'm not looking at the screen, Monday. See how it did? Today is today. OK, that didn't make sense. Let me do one more thing. I'm going to do um, this is a test. Let's see if it, if it works. The T9 pad has generally good feel. Um, it doesn't feel mushy or anything. It has a nice bit of feedback. So if you are good at T9, you probably won't have a problem entering text into the Acer B-Touch E200. But if you're not a fan of, you know, this sort of keyboard, then you may want to stay away from this device. So that was just a look at the keyboard. And finally, a few notes on performance, battery life, and call quality. So in terms of performance, as you saw jumping from screen to screen, the B-Touch E200 is kind of laggy. Uh, there is a delay when you go to open certain things, like here we're trying to open up Internet Explorer, and the screen loads. It's three. For about three or four seconds, whereas a lot of newer Windows Mobile hardware is just instant, especially with that 
Qualcomm Snapdragon processor. In terms of battery life, you'll get through about a day and a half uh, using the B-Touch E200 with moderate use. With heavy use, you'll get through the whole day. Uh, and with light use, you'll probably get two or three days of use out of this device. In terms of call quality, I found call quality to be quite good. The speakerphone did this stored at high volumes, but that's really a problem that we see with a lot of phones these days, it seems. So overall, the Acer B-Touch E200 is undoubtedly a budget device. If you're looking for something that's very basic, that will make calls, that can do email, and that does it with a nice slider design, then you'll be happy with the, the B-Touch E200. That said, if you want something that's fast, if you want something that's flashy, with really good build quality, perhaps you want to look elsewhere. But if you do want one, they're shipping over at clove.co.uk, like I said, for about $350 unlocked. That is it for now for the Acer B-Touch E200.